I'm interrupting my PCT episodes in order to get this video to you ASAP. I have gotten so many questions about what I would do in order to change my gear. My original plan was to post this at the end of my series, but I'm going to post it now because I feel like it'll be better timing for most of you who are gearing up for your hikes. So I really hope you get some insight from me recapping what I changed about my gear throughout the PCT. I'm going to show you every piece of gear I had with me on the Pacific Crest Trail and explain to you how I used it, what I liked about it. So I'm going to give you a full overview of my gear. For shoes, I used a pair of Ultra Lone Peaks every 500 miles and I had to switch them out every 500 miles. And then I bought over-the-counter insoles with some arch support to put in them. I highly recommend doing this if you can because the little insoles that come with the shoes have no arch support at all and it's nice to have arch support because throughout the day your arch muscles are gonna get tired worked out really well for me and then my camp shoes I just brought what I had which are my Birkenstock I think they're rubber so they're light they're a lot lighter than the sort of classic Birkenstock that has the leather and the cork I think these were awesome. I also had a sitting pad with me and honestly, 10 out of 10 would recommend. I loved being able to sit on this anywhere I went. It helps with temperature regulation, but also just having that little cushion to sit on. Rest is such an important part of the longevity of a through hike, so highly recommend. Honestly, next through hike, I might even bring my big one, the one that's like full length, so I can just lounge on it. <laughs> As I go through all this gear with you, it's obvious that pack weight is really important and I'm trying to get my pack weight down as much as possible, but I'm still working on it. And it also means that you just can't carry in unlimited amounts of food. And so on this hike, that's why I brought a multivitamin with me. The multivitamin I found it was hard to swallow so I ended up skipping a lot of days. So it got me thinking as I hiked, I kept hearing about AG1. So I was thinking, okay, maybe I'll try that for my next hike. Much to my surprise though, AG1 reached out to me and AG1 is the sponsor of today's video, which is so exciting. So if you haven't heard of AG1 before, AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement and as you can see, you drink it and it's been super easy to add into my morning routine. I just started adding it in and I'm really enjoying it so far and I'm doing it now already, but I'm also thinking it's gonna be so easy to do on trail, especially because they have these little travel packs that is like a one serving pack. So for me, what foundational nutrition means is that if I'm not getting everything my body needs in my food, it's just helping me fill those gaps for whole body health. AG1 contains prebiotics and probiotics to help support your gut health. AG1 is your daily dose of vitamin C, zinc, and more, which can support your immune health. The AG1 team works hard to make AG1 the best it can be. They have strict manufacturing and extensive testing processes that guarantee that AG1 is tested for 950 contaminants and impurities. If you want to try AG1 yourself, you can go to drinkag1.com slash Krista Norwick, or you can scan the QR code up on the screen. And if you do that, AG1 is going to give you a free starter kit so that includes the canister, the shaker, a year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five extra travel packs, perfect for hiking. So thank you so much AG1 for sponsoring this video and huge thanks to all of you watching because without you, I wouldn't have been able to start partnering up with sponsors and that means I get to make even better videos for you. So I'm so excited about that. Okay, back to the video. Micro spikes, so I bought these micro spikes partway through my hike so I could have them with me in the Sierras, just in case I hit snow. I did use them twice in the Sierras, very short sections, but I was glad I had them. I got the black diamond micro spikes that are like meant for trail runners. So they were really comfortable on my shoes and pretty lightweight. I don't know exactly how much they weigh, but I carried them the rest of the time, brought them throughout the whole desert because I was hiking into December, so I thought, you know, there could be snow at any time in the mountains in the desert. So I'm glad I had them. I just got used to carrying them. I did carry my ice axe for the Sierra, for half of the Sierra, but once I realized there was like no snow left, I stopped carrying it. So I really only carried it for maybe 10 days. 
I brought with me for my shelter the X Mid Pro One, and I really loved this shelter. It's by Durston. I did have the one zipper break, the vestibule zipper, so I was able to send my tent back to them, and they sent me a lightly used tent that was fully functional. And then they repaired my tent and then they'll use it for the next person who needs a replacement so i had good experience with them definitely recommend this tent this is the tent and the pegs and then my trekking poles my hiking poles were the poles to pitch my tent and it requires both trekking poles and the trekking poles i had with me are black diamond and i specifically chose ones that could compress this short because i wanted to be able to fit them in my backpack if i needed i really liked these they worked well as you can see i held them here a lot so some of the paint has fallen off but otherwise they're in perfect condition for my sleeping pad i have this neo air by thermarest this is a Four Seasons pad, so it is really comfortable and cozy in all different temperatures, and it did really well. It did get one hole right here. This is the only hole I got on the PCT, and I was able to find the hole with the help of my trail friend and patch it up, but this happened in the final three days, five days, something like that. So it held up really well otherwise. Okay, for my pillow, I have the Sea to Summit. It's a luxury I wanted and needed. I have a little bit of a neck thing, so having a pillow just makes the biggest difference to me. I did have two different sleeping bags with me. This is the one I had with me the vast majority of the time. The bag I started with for July and August was a zero Celsius bag, and it was good for July and August, but as soon as I started hiking into September, I was too cold uh, most nights. So I switched out to this. This is a Marmot Trestles Elite Eco, and it's good to minus 15 Celsius or two degrees or so Fahrenheit. And once I got this in September, I hiked all the way until December and I was warm, I would say like 97% of the nights. It was really good. I did bring extra layers to wear clothing wise and I'll show you those in a bit but this was really good for me cooking so I did cook I wanted hot coffee in the morning and warm dinner at night and I am not at the point where I'm ready to cold soak yet that's the way that a lot of hikers do get their pack weights down is they cold soak their food and I'm willing to try it one day but I wasn't ready to try it on this hike. So I did have my stove and my fuel. So I often was carrying the smaller size fuel, this one, but I did sometimes carry the medium size fuel. Um, I carried all different brands because along the way you often don't have a choice. Whatever fuel they have in stock at the store, you buy. For my stove, I brought the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. This was a new super light stove, new to me. I got it for this hike, obsessed with it. I love this stove so much, it's so small. It fits in my pot with small fuel and um, it has the little starter and it always worked. Sometimes I'd have to cook it like two or three times, but that's fine, always worked. And then for my pot, I have the ever new ultra light titanium pot also obsessed with this pot my uncle gave this to me it was like a hand-me-down from him love um, titanium's awesome because it's so lightweight it has a built-in handle and i was able to have my coffee i just use this instead of a mug in the morning and then my dinner at night with this and i'll show you how everything fits so the small fuel and the pocket rocket deluxe fits in there so that helps a lot for packing lid on top and then all of that can just slip in somewhere in my backpack. I have a titanium spork by Light My Fire, I think is the brand. Yeah, again, titanium's just awesome. I used to have plastic sporks and I broke so many of them. I was like, I'm just gonna get a titanium one. <laughs> knife with me. This is an Opinol knife, just a small, small knife. I use this to cut open my bags of dehydrated meals and that's basically it <laughs> i would 
say maybe half my hike I used the Ursac for food. Um, I used it in Washington and Oregon, portion of the desert. I had never used an Ursac before. I really liked it. I would cinch the top, do an extra loop. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but this is just how that I got into, to like cinch it extra and then tie it around a tree at night. The other half the time, approximately, I used this Bear Vault, Bear Vault 500. And this can fit in the top of my pack. This I had with me for all of NorCal, all of the Sierras, and the start of the desert. You don't need a bear canister for that whole time. I just, um, I needed to get mail and my husband was sending me just a package. So I thought, just send me the bear vault now because um, mail from Canada into the US is pretty expensive. So I decided to carry it starting a bit early. So that brings me to my pack. So I have a Durston Kakwa 55 liter pack. It held up quite good considering it's an ultralight pack. Um, here at the top, this is where the Bear Vault 500 fit in, so it was obviously easier to fit the Ursac with food, but I could fit the Bear Can right in the top. Um, all of this, all the buckles, mesh, everything held up quite well in that regard. My straps were super comfortable the whole time. If you've ever had um, pressure point here where it really is painful when you're hiking. I used to get that since switching to this pack. I have not experienced that at all, which is amazing. The spot that wore out the most on my pack was these bottom spots right here at the bottom where it was sitting, hugging my pelvis. And this waist belt started to rip away from the pack. So I was able to get this patch sewed on at a gear repair I think it was called gear fix in Bend um, so that was great but I would have definitely had to get that repaired along the way because it was about to rip off so it ended up that I made it to the terminus the southern terminus without this fully ripping off um, so I did make it the whole trail but when I went back to see if I could hike the closure that had happened while I went through the fire closure um, I decided to get it sewn on just in case because I knew I was going to have to carry more gear. I didn't start with this bag. I learned about this brand while I was in Washington on the trail, CNOC. Epic. I love these bags. They're so durable. Um, this lasted me the entire trail. Got it discolored, but that's fine. And it's awesome because you fill it through the top. And it was pretty easy to fill that at most water sources you slide this slider on and then you screw your Sawyer filter screws right onto the bag. Amazing. And then you just squeeze it through here. So super happy with this setup. I started with the um, plastic bags that come with the Sawyer and the Sawyer mini filter and the Sawyer mini got slow quite quickly and I was getting really cold sitting there squeezing these cold sacks of water um, and you know it would take me 20 to 30 minutes to filter a couple liters of water with the Sawyer mini. The Sawyer mini I think is great for day hikes or if you're a runner and you want to be able to filter but I think for through hiking, the Sawyer Squeeze, the full regular size, I think is the better filter because it kept its like speed of filtration up better. So I did get this about halfway through my hike and I was happy with the adjustment or the improvement. I literally left everything the same way I had it on the trail. So I had my Ziploc, trusty Ziploc with toilet paper and hand sanitizer. I had to replenish my hand sanitizer, I think like five times over the course of the trail. And then my trowel by the deuce um, so I could dig my hole to go poop. And I didn't, wasn't sure how often I would use this, but I literally used it like basically every day. This is my cube and my packing cube that I had all my other toiletries in. Okay, so I wanna show you every last tiny item I have in my toiletries. Super floss, dental floss, mixture, toothpaste tablets, daily multivitamin, Advil. Okay, for patches I had, these were patches for my tent. So that's the Dyneema. I had gear patches, just sort of regular generic gear patches. And then I had patches for my Thermarest. 
I used one of my gear patches when I ripped my rain pants and I used one of my Thermarest patches. I ended up mailing my brush that I brought home because it was big and heavy and I ended up just carrying with me one of these free combs that you can get at some hotels. So I've got that, I don't know, somewhere in Oregon. I also carried this size sunscreen with me, always. Luco tape, my back flusher for my filter. This is more sort of like my first aid Ziploc. Polysporin, doxycycline, and an antiviral medication. So I get cold sores sometimes. And then the doxycycline, I brought it specifically in case I got a tick bite. Amodium Benadryl, Claritin Cambia for migraines, Gravol, just an assorted mix of band-aids and I did have to restock my band-aids a few times at stores. Some Steri strips. I did carry Q-tips with me. I liked having them. I would definitely do that again. I mailed ahead Q-tips in my resupply. I also had earplugs with me and I mailed ahead new ones in my resupply boxes. One of these little toothbrushes. At one point I bought this tiny roll of duct tape um, somewhere in SoCal. Extra hair elastics, I found the having extras extremely helpful because you could use them to like um, close up food bags and things like that. I had this Allen key that I never used but this is to screw on my Peak Design clip. So this is what I had on my strap of my backpack. It was attached like this and then I would slide my camera right into it. And this Allen key was to tighten the piece that attaches to my camera. Never needed to use it. So I'm not sure I would bother carrying this next time. Weezers and nail clippers. I did bring a tick key, which I think the tweezers do the trick. So I started carrying little things of Kleenex because my nose got so dried out and chapped from blowing it so often because my nose was like constantly running all through the fall hiking. So I treated myself to Kleenex so I didn't have to use toilet paper to blow my nose. I brought my um, face lotion I like to wear, Clinique. So that's all my toiletries. Let's move on to electronics and then the last thing I'll show you is my clothing. For charging, I had with me this battery bank I bought at London Drugs like 10 years ago, I think. It's 15,600 milliamp hours. It lasted great. It's still working great. It's pretty heavy. Worth it. So I could charge up everything. With the battery bank, I had a few cords. I started out with one of my wall to USB adapters and then I got Brian to bring me a second one. So I would definitely have two with me. I did see some people who had one of these but had two USB ports in it. Glad I had these because I did have some really quick turnarounds when I was resupplying. So it just helps to charge things faster or charge more at the same time. I had my iPhone with me. So this is a life proof case and the cover over the camera was good until about five or six weeks into my hike when it got so scratched up that it was affecting my footage when I was taking video with my phone. And if you've seen my short form videos um, here on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, I filmed all of those with my phone. So it was very important to me that the camera still have like a clear view of what I was looking at. So what I ended up doing was I cut off, pulled off that plastic covering and kept the case on so that like a lot of the phone was protected, but just always had to remind myself this is no longer waterproof. <laughs> I'm not super stoked with the life proof case. This has happened to me now on two of my long distance hikes where the camera cover part gets so scratched I can't use it anymore. So if you know of a waterproof case, where that doesn't happen, let me know. So I used my phone for navigation with Far Out app and I used it for filming my short videos and I journaled on it at night and I listened to podcasts and I listened to music from my phone through my AirPods. So I brought my AirPods with me. They're looking a little bit grimy, a little bit dirty because you just can't keep things clean out there fully. I did clean them quite a few times with my um, Q-tips, but they still are working great and I was able to listen to podcasts almost all day every day, charge my phone and my AirPods pretty much every 
night with my battery bank and that would last me a week and most of the time I was able to charge before a week was up so I was pretty happy with that I had to be careful like I had to have my phone on airplane mode all of the time and not have the screen open too often but that worked out pretty well I also carried with me this pelican case so this is absolutely uh, a heavier item if you're not a content creator I don't think you would need what I brought this for. What I did bring this for was my extra camera stuff. So I had extra camera battery in here for the camera that's currently filming. And I had this stack of SD cards. I filmed everything on my camera in 4K. So they're big files. So I knew I needed a lot of storage with me and I really wanted did not want to lose any footage. Um, I kept each SD card in its little plastic case and then inside my Pelican case. And when it was really rainy, my stuff did get saturated. So I was glad I had this. I would usually have one of my mats with me and I brought these so I could journal on them and mail them home to Brian so he could sort of experience the hike with me. I won't do this again, I don't think, on another hike. It was really cool to do it this time, um, just because of where Brian and I were at, but I wouldn't carry them. They're kind of heavy, and then if I couldn't mail for a little bit, I'd have like two. <laughs> it started to add up. Of course, I had my passport with me, double Ziploc, and this cloth so I could clean the lens of my camera, and then a pen. I ran out of one pen and then a lovely person at a store gave me that one for free. And then this is the map sack I had. Again, I'm not sure I would bring a map sack again. I would probably do fanny pack, which I didn't do, but that's like the thing to do on the PCT and put my um, passport in there. And you know, even if I had my Pelican case still put that in there maybe and just have like my super important items on my body at all times. I had the Garmin InReach Mini for messaging people. I didn't use it for navigation but I could have if I wanted to. And then I have the Petzl Actic headlamp. Used to this a ton and it has a rechargeable battery on the inside. So I could charge this with my battery bank um, and I did have to do that a few times. So that was really nice and you don't have to carry extra batteries. You can just recharge it. I had this little Gorilla Pod with me so I could set up my camera and get tripod shots. For my camera, I had the Sony ZV-E10 vlogging camera with the little mic fluffer on top, and I absolutely loved this camera. I'll definitely be bringing it again. Ray-Ban sunglasses, wallet, but I didn't actually have this wallet. I just pulled out my essential cards, like my ID, driver's license, credit cards, debit cards, and I carried them in a Ziploc. Moving on to my clothing. Two Patagonias, and I had three smart wool pairs. So I had five pairs of underwear with me. For my period, I tried out um, period underwear this hike. So this is by NYX, K-N-I-X. And in the bottom here, this can hold six to eight regular tampons worth. So I had one of those and I had one of these reusable pads. For socks, I had two pairs of hiking socks. So the ankle smart wool socks. These have never been used. The two pairs I had with me, I actually already threw out because they were disgusting. So I actually only used, I used two pairs for the first half of my hike and then refreshed them for the second half. So I only actually ever had four pairs of hiking socks. I think I would recommend switching out your socks more frequently because they were pretty bad. These were my camp socks I had. So just a warmer, longer sock to keep my feet cozier at camp ended up buying myself a bathing suit partway through my hike so i bought a small one that i thought would be light <laughs> i bought it when i got to oregon like the first town in oregon and i used it three times and then i never used it again but i carried it all the way to to the terminus so i don't really know if i would carry it again to be honest i just brought one sports bra and it it's looking 
pretty good still, even though like this is my third long distance hike with this sports bra. Love wearing smart wool for my sports bra because it doesn't really get smelly and it dries out easily. Okay, for my hiking clothing, I had these shorts from Mountain Equipment Company. And so that's a Canadian company. It's like our version of REI in the US. And they're still looking in great condition. I can definitely wear those again. Loved them. They dried out so quick, so comfortable. They have a drawstring, so when I lost weight, I could still cinch them up. Also from Mountain Equipment Company, I have this. Um, it's an SPF hiking shirt. It got extremely stained on the back, so it kind of looks disgusting. But it doesn't smell too bad, like it got clean. Um, I really like hiking in a long sleeve like this. I'll definitely do that again. And then for my mid-layer, I have this lightweight Arcteryx jacket. It's not a rain jacket, it's like an extra sun layer, mid-layer, helps with the wind. I wore it a lot. If you've watched my videos of my hike, you'll know I wore it a lot. <laughs> then I had for my hat, the Arcteric Alaho cap. And I think this might be its last through hike. This was its third through hike, so it's done very well. For warmth, I have an Anion 100% wool toque. Love it. And then for sleeping, I had this top and bottom base layer set of Icebreaker. I think it's, yeah, it's 250. So here's the pants. And here's the top. Wore that every single night. And then I also brought with me these insulated pants by Arcteryx. I got these for free. They're okay. And then this is my beautiful Arcteryx puffy. I'm allergic to down, so I forgot to mention that, but my sleeping bag is synthetic. So is my puffy. And it's this color that definitely showed the dirt. I've cleaned it now. It looks a lot better than it did. Um, but this, it did a great job for me. I was really happy with this. For my rain jacket, I had the Arcteryx Alpha SV. This is, I think, overkill for through hike. It's pretty bulky, um, so it's hard to fit into my pack often. I would probably get just a lightweight jacket for my next through hike and not carry such a big one. These lightweight rain pants from Mountain Come and Company, obsessed, loved them. They got a hole, so I patched them on my butt, so I must have slid down something. Um, but I wore them often when there was prickly bushes and stuff to protect my legs, and I don't think there's any holes in them along the legs. So, they're awesome. Ooh, my last few items. For my gloves, I brought these Rab gloves. These are just the gloves I had. I usually wear these cross-country skiing and ski touring, but they were great. I wore these a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. And then I had a buff once Brian joined me in the desert. He brought me a buff because I started to feel like I might want to cover my face. I never actually did. I barely ever used it, so I don't know. This was a last minute addition. I bought this on my way to the trail, like day, the day before I started. It's a pack towel face cloth. And I used this all of the time. There are some spots along the PCT where there's a shower, but there's no towel. So this is my towel. I used it to wash my face and my feet pretty much every night. And I used it to blow my nose. I used it for so much. So I would highly recommend a little towel like this. For peeing, I have my Kula cloth. So this is a pee cloth. The black side is antimicrobial. So when you pee, you wipe with this and then you rinse it out in water sources along the way. And highly recommend it because you don't need as much toilet paper. So yeah, I really like the Kula cloth. And this was its third long distance hike. It's done a lot of bushwhacking hanging on my pack. I think it's finally done. <laughs> so it lasted a pretty long time. Okay, that's everything I had with me on my third hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. And I did that in 2023 and I went Sobo. So I think I did have a few warmer items 
more of the time because of that because it does get cold at night throughout November and December. I did have extra gear, extra weight because I was creating videos specifically um, and a couple items that were just like luxury items to me. My pack was definitely on the heavier side compared to the other hikers I met. It would be nice to get it lighter and I think I definitely could get it lighter but I would have to sacrifice some of my comforts. Maybe I will next time, but I'll share with you whatever I bring on my next through hike. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please let me know. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and all of my items or as many as I possibly could, I've listed below with links so you can click on those and find items if you want them. Bye.